Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again. We are, what, two weeks away from training camp? It's almost here, y'all. And I'm excited to see these guys in training camp, seeing them in pads, seeing them go at it, seeing what we got on this roster right now with all this talent that we have that I think that will do good this season. I'm looking at all the um, the NFL analysts and all the haters out there saying that the Cowboys ain't going to do nothing this year. But, hey, we'll see. Um, whenever the Cowboys are doubted, you guys know we always have a good season that year. So I think that with all the hard work these players are doing this offseason, Dak with his wide receivers going down to Florida and practicing and the linemen, offensive linemen doing their thing. And these position groups are gaining camaraderie with each other. They are learning how to be a teammate with each other. And that is the most important thing because when you are in tune with your fellow teammates, you play better because you know what this guy is going to do. You already know where he's going to be at and you get a feel of that person. So when you can look at that guy and be like, hey, you know, you can nod your head or wink your eye or do something that will get that player's attention that he knows, okay, I know what he means when he says this, that, and the third. So with that being said, I want to go over real quick um, the, our draft picks. Um, what rookie this year do you think that will make the most impact? Now, I have three of them. Now, I'm going to go through all of them real quick, but I it's it's three, my top 3. I have I have 3. I can't just say one because I feel like most of them is going to have some type of impact this year, but to make an assessment on what exactly they're going to do, we don't know because like I said, we haven't been to training camp yet. But just seeing what they've done in college, seeing some of the practices that they had so far with the Cowboys this off season with the mini camps and stuff, um I'm I'm high on a lot of them. And the Cowboys did a good job with the draft this year, I believe. Um and when they do these draft grades right after the draft, they base it on what they were in college, but again, you don't know what a player is going to be like in the NFL because there's injuries that play in effect. And not only injuries, but there are also um, scheme fits. A team could pick a player and he could just not be a great fit for that team as far as the scheme goes. And he doesn't do well. There's been a lot of players in the past that have started their careers off really slow, but progressed and got better and got with a different team and finally found their groove later on in their career. Some players started out fast because they started out with a team that had a good um, scheme for them, and then they go and get traded to another team or they go to free agency and they go to another team, and that's just not a fit for them because you got teams, and Cowboys Brass is known for that as well, playing players sometimes outside of their skill set, and you can't do that. If, you, if you're going to scout a player, if you're going to draft a player, if you're going to pick a player off the free agency, you need to have a player to fit your scheme. I remember when, um, well, this is recently, like, I don't know if he's still available, but a lot of, I've seen a lot of fans um, gawk about wanting to get Jonathan Hankins in here. Now, the team doesn't think that he's a good scheme fit. Yeah, he's a great player. He's a great defensive lineman, but at the end of the day, he's most likely not a good fit for the Cow Cowboys as far as scheme goes. That's the reason why they went with Coney Ely and um, so on and so forth. They want to see the progression to Taco. They want to see Demarcus Lawrence have another great year and see what he can do. And um, hopefully his back don't go out. So um, I'm going to go. I'm going to start from the wide receiver group. So we have two rookies there. So you got Michael Gallup. Our third round draft pick, and you got Cedric Wilson. Now, they've I haven't really seen much of Cedric Wilson as far as you know what he could do with the team. I, I've seen Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup goes up and gets that ball. He he's a good high pointer. He reminds me of um, a rookie version of um, Alan Hearns. Now, and I'm a I'm a I'm gonna say something about Alan Hearns, even though he's not a rookie, but he ties into this as well. So. I think that, again, wide receiver, I've said this before, is another position that is um, a hard to transition from the collegiate to the uh, pros because of just what you have to do, the route running, 
um, getting in tune with your quarterback. Try and like I said, these DBs are faster in the NFL than they are in, in college, and they're bigger. <laughs> so, Michael Gallup, I think that in the long run, he will be a great. We're gonna look back on this draft and we're gonna say, "Damn, picking Michael Gallup in the third round was was awesome. Like that was damn near a steal." We're gonna we're gonna look back two to three years later once he gets in the groove of this team and he gets a, a year under his belt or two years under his belt, whatever the case may be. But I think that Michael Gallup is definitely gonna be a great player for us going forward. Cedric Wilson, I don't because his wide receiver core is so stacked right now, he has to do a whole lot to get noticed and get up to the point to even make this team now but if he does make this team I've, I've heard a lot of people say and I'm talking about like NFL guys analysts and stuff say that he was definitely um he's definitely a, a guy that 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 will be great on this team now like I said I haven't seen much of him I'm looking forward to seeing him in training camp that's what I'm looking mostly to see how he does with these DBs in practice and um the blue and white scrimmage. I'm looking forward to that too. They they always do the blue and white scrimmage like like right the week of my birthday. Like it's awesome. Um, but um, those two guys, look out for them because they they were definitely good pickups on that wide receiver group. Um, Dalton Schultz, Dalton Schultz, and I've mentioned him before when I did my tight end breakdown. That you know him coming from Stanford, which is they they run a pro style offense. I think that once he gets in the groove of this team, and right now I think Swain is going to be the starter, but he def Dalton definitely has a chance to move up as he learns the playbook, as he learns how the NFL goes, and how to block these <laughs> NFL defensive guys because these guys ain't small. These guys are big as hell. So, you know, th at that tight end position, I think that eventually he will take over that starting spot. Not right away. But I think that over time he will be he will definitely be good. Um, Mike White. Now a lot of people are very high on Mike White. I've, I've even heard people say that he was going to unseat Dak Prescott for the quarterback position. I'm like, no, not right now. Um, if Dak Prescott don't do well, maybe. But if Dak Prescott does what he's supposed to do and he gets even better than what he is right now and he keeps progressing, it's, it's, it's Dak squad. You know, let Dak do his thing. Leave Dak alone. Let him do his thing. Now, as far as Mike White goes, I love how I love that he's an accurate passer. He's he's very cerebral. He's a smart guy. He's not as mobile as um, Dak Prescott is, but um, well, like I said, he's another guy like Dalton Schultz. Once he gets in the groove of things, I think that you know if if the Cowboys decide to keep him for a second contract, that might be a good idea because you know with a guy sitting behind like that. In the next couple of years, he could be a starter. Who knows? Whether it's here or somewhere else. But I would like to see him progress here. Um, our number one draft pick, Leighton Vander Esch. <laughs> it's a lot of us that didn't want him at first. But I think that he is going to make an impact because of that linebacker position is needed. And he's a sure tackler. But again, his success is contingent upon the defensive lineman getting pressure on the quarterback. Because if they can maintain their blocks and keep things clean for him, oh, he's gonna be he's gonna be tackling mugs all day. So that's gonna be a good thing for him. And I think that he's gonna be an immediate impact because he's gonna be he's gonna complement Jalen Smith and Sean Lee, which in turn will keep Sean Lee. You have a better chance of keeping Sean Lee healthy for a whole sixteen uh, games. Bo Scarborough. Now. I don't think that Bo's going to make this team. I think that um, he's going to be on a practice squad. I could be wrong. He could he could show out in um, training camp. Who knows? But if he does make this team, if, if Bo Scarborough happens to make this team, he's definitely just going to be primarily a special teamer, primarily. Um, he has a lot to work on. Um, he did come from Alabama. He's a, he's a big, sturdy guy, but he has to learn how to be a pro. And that's going to take him some time. Dorrance Armstrong. Team was very high on Dorrance Armstrong. Now, I didn't know much about Dorrance Armstrong coming out of college. But, you know, seeing um, seeing the Cowboys brass and how much 
they're in tune with him and how much they think that he can make an impact. We'll see. Um, <laughs> this defensive core, this defensive line, I mean, is so stacked right now. We have a lot of players in position. So somebody, we're going we're gonna to have to release some good players, and that's going to suck. I really feel sorry for the staff because they're going to have a hard time picking a starter, picking the roster, just, just in general, just picking who is going to be on this 50 man, 53 man roster. It's going to be hard, especially because of the wide receiver position is so stacked. What are you going to do? You're going to have to go long somewhere. You're going to have to go short somewhere. And like I said before, you cannot have a stake on every plate, meaning every player can't be an all-star. Somebody's got to, but, but, but to win games, not only is it in the trenches, but you also have to make sure that you have depth. That is important. If you don't have depth, you can't do anything. Because if your starters go out and you got your backups playing, they're going to get their ass whooped by the other team. It's just like if you're on a basketball team and the bench players come on and you don't have none of your starters in and they all suck. If you're up 15 points, they're going to come back on you and they're going to beat you. And that's just how it is. So you just have to have a balance. Connor Williams, our second round pick. Now, Connor Williams um, definitely is going to make a day one impact because of the simple fact that he's already penciled in at the start at the left guard position. I said this in my um, offensive of line video, um, so I'm not going to go too much into that. But you guys know Connor Williams is going to be, I think that he has an opportunity to become a beast um, because, like I said, he he has the will. He has the, um, the, the know-how. He's he He doesn't miss blocks. He's a, an, another cerebral player. He's athletic, and he's he will be perfect right there in between Smith and uh, Frederick. Chris Covington. Now, that's another guy that I've I've heard a lot of um, coaches and stuff speak high on him. He he's a very sturdy, strong player, um, sure tackler. Now he is. Um, you got to look at what you got at linebacker. You got to see who's going to make the squad. We still got Justin Marshall Little. You still got um, Damian Wilson. Because your top three positions right now are Leighton Vander Esch, Sean Lee, and um, Jalen Smith. Everybody after that is fighting for a roster spot. So we'll see what he does. Um, I know a lot of you like Chris Covington, too. Um, I'm gunning for a lot. Like I said, these nine guys, we got some good draft picks this year. So I'm not. I'm not really... I'm not really looking at it as um, I just think that a lot of them, if they make this squad, they definitely have a chance to um, literally put that work in and show what they can do with this team. Now, back, like I said in the beginning, Michael Gallup reminds me a lot of like a younger Alan Hearns. And a lot of you guys probably going to say, oh, Alan Hearns ain't all that. OK, no, he's not Des, But I will say that Alan Hearns is probably going to be great on this team because I think that Blake Bortles, um, that Dak Prescott is a better quarterback than Blake Bortles. If you go back and look at Jaguars tape when he was there, he actually, it was times where Blake Bortles would throw the ball behind him, throw the ball not where it's supposed to be, and Alan Hearns would have to come back or he would have to fight back to get the ball, and he did. And not only did he get the ball, but he still <laughs> got more yards after the catch. So, with that being said, if Dak is on the money, Alan Hearns can't do nothing but be better. It's not like he was a sorry player. He just didn't have an efficient quarterback. Now, Blake Bortles is all right, but I don't. he's not better than Dak Prescott. Now, because of those mispasses and those things, and he was still able to counteract that and still catch the ball, is phenomenal. So you look at that. And you look at um, the camaraderie that he's getting with Dak Prescott, that's a win-win to me. Like, I just feel like he's going to make an immediate impact. But I'm not going to put too much into it because, like I said, that wide receiver position, it takes a while to get into the groove of it. Now, he may have decent numbers his rookie year, but I don't think that he's going to maturate for real until after his second season. Um, so that's one. Uh, Leighton Le Le Vander Esch. Leighton Vander Esch, like I said, He's going to be a day one immediate impact. With that linebacker position, we rotate so much because we normally use um, 
in the nickel, we we go with two linebackers anyway. So it's going to be two guys on the field, either him and Jalen, or Jalen and Lee, or 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 Vander Esch and Lee. It, it it really depends. So it depends on um, how they how they want to play it. To me, it doesn't really matter who start. They all going to have some decent play time. <clears throat> oh, second round draft picker Connor Williams, day one starter, immediate impact. And to solidify this line, he was that missing piece that we needed. And I think that our offensive line is going to be dominant because of that. Because you got him, and if everybody stays healthy and 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 in tune with each other, oh, it's going <laughs> to Zeke is going to eat and run and hurdle all day long. So, yeah, that's what I had. So you let me know who who's your top guys as far as um, the rookie impacts for their rookie season. Just getting ready for training camp. I'm I'm waiting on that. So um, that being said, I'm about to get some food because I'm hungry. Got all these machines back here. But uh, yeah, just bring your boy E2 Blue. Like, share, comment. I appreciate all my subscribers for all y'all support. E2 Blue, always keeping it real. I'm out.